Hi friends, welcome back to SQL with Ravi Martha. If you are not subscribed to my channel, please do subscribe and tap the bell icon. Today, we'll take a look at the table variables in SQL Server. Also, we'll compare table variables with temporary tables in SQL Server. Also, we'll see the limitations of table variables. So let's get started. The table variables behaves like a normal variable in SQL Server. However, they can hold rows of data like a regular table. Table variables are created in tempdb, which is one of the system databases of SQL Server. Table variables can be created by prefixing at sign in SQL Server. Table variables should be declared with declare keyword followed by a table keyword. Table variables is like a local variable and can be used in a function, store procedure or in a batch. Table variables can be used in select, insert, update and delete statements. When table variables are used in stored procedures, they would cause fewer recompilations of the stored procedures. Transactions involving in table variables last only for duration of an update on the table variable which causes less locking and logging, you know, similarly like the temporary tables. Syntax. So syntax is pretty much similar to the temporary tables, but we need to use the table keyword after the table variable. So declare at the table variable, table and the column names. So let's see it in real time in, in SSMS. So currently I am in SSMS. So let's take a look at what we have discussed in the slide. Right, so the table variable behaves like a normal variable. So here I have a variable called at the rate variable, which is of worker type length of 10, and I'm assigning particular string here. So if I am selecting the string, it will give me the result one, two, three. And if I use a go, a batch separator, as soon as I use a batch separator, it gives a red swiggly line, which means this, this is no more valid. So the table variable also behave the same way. So as soon as you divide it using a batch separator, right? It says it's invalid object. So the scope will be within this particular batch. So the table variable also behaves the same way. Let's take a look at the table variable now. So here I have taken a table variable with the same definition we have seen in the slide. So I'm declaring this table. And if you're trying to insert, so it says invalid object. So everything should be the definition and all the other actions should be done within the same batch. So let me run this. So first one, so it has given me the data. So it is creating the table variable and inserting the data to the table variable and it's retrieving the data. If I use this second one also, it will give the two rows of data because this is the existence of table variable is still there. So it is within single batch. So that's how the table variable behaves. So let me see if I add a go, a batch separator now, as soon as I uncomment the go, there will be a red swiggly line and which says it's an invalid object. And if I run, it will give me an error saying that it is no more valid. So the batch separator. So this proves that the table variable will be valid within the batch. So let me see if I comment the go and enable the begin and end. So it's still accessible. So this is, there are two, three select statements, one and two, and I'm scrolling down. So this is the third table. So this is still accessible. That's how the table variable behaves. So it's still accessible within the batch. So we have four statements here and we have four result set as well. So let me, so there are four result set. So this is how the table variable behaves. And uh, we should use the recompile option, you know, since it, it will not automatically recompiled because uh, say suppose initially you have inserted two rows and uh, during the batch you have inserted some thousand records the SQL server query optimizer doesn't know that you know the temp table variable is having thousand records now 
so we should explicitly use recompile hint you know in order to recompile that particular table variable and it will generate a new plan so that's how I will show you one of the syntax for that so we if we use the recompile option so it will automatically recompiled so you option recompile is the the hint the table variable hint right so let's try creating the same scenario with a temp table so I'm here I'm using the temporary table and inserting some data and selecting and I'm using a batch separator and trying to select the data let's see if it works yes it is working so we have even though after the batch separator the temp table existence will be there so here I have three select statements and three results here right let's see the table variables are existing in the temp DB or not so for that I'm using the create statement and insert statement and I'm selecting the data and I'm writing a wait statement and I'm selecting the data again so let's run this particular statement and see if it is existing in the temp DB right let's execute this so it is executing for 30 seconds just pin the this particular query window go to the databases system databases temp DB and table variables if you refresh this right so we have the table variable which we have created in the previous session and the hash this particular value so this is the table variable so this proves that the table variables exist in the temp DB so it is the execution has been completed so before refreshing I'm seeing there are two tables here one is table temp table one is table variable let me refresh this one so the table variable is gone so which is of type this one so this is the proof of the table variable existence in the temp DB let's see a couple of limitations and restrictions of table variable so the table variable doesn't have distribution statistics so they won't recompile in many cases the optimizer would build a query plan on the assumptions that the table variable is not having any rows due to that we should be more cautious while using the table variables if you are expecting large number of rows example more than 100 so it is better to go for temp tables or choose other better options queries joining the table and table variable we should use a recompile hint you know option recompile hint you know to force the optimizer to use the correct cardinality of the table correct number of rows and generate the new plan table variable shouldn't be used when cost based choices are required to achieve a efficient query plan queries that modify table variables don't generate parallel query execution plan queries that read table variable without modifying them can be still parallelized indexes can't be created explicitly on the table variables and no statistics are kept on the table variables however from sql server 2014 onwards or the later versions we have the option to create the indexes as part of the table definition if you want to explore more on the table variables I have added the link in the description you know to explore more let's summarize what we have discussed in this session table variables are the variables which can hold rows of data just like the table table variables are created in tempdb which is one of the system databases of the SQL server table variables can be created by prefixing at sign in SQL Server table variable should be declared with a declare keyword followed by a table keyword table variable is like a local variable and can be used in function store procedures or in a batch the table variables can be used in insert select update and delete statements when table variables are used in store procedure they would cause less recompilations transactions involved in table variables last only for that particular duration of the update hence they will cause less locking and logging of resources like the temporary tables the syntax of creating the table variable is declare the table variable name and the table keyword and then the columns that's it and thank you for listening have a great day